Hi there and welcome to another Random Bits. Uh, this time we are going to look at creating a kind of abstract wallpaper like this one I have in the background and uh, we're going to use a, a free piece of software known as Blender which is a great 3D modeling tool very useful for games and stuff uh, but it's also a, uh, a 3D modeling tool or ray tracer that allows you to generate uh, pictures like that or things like that. Um, so you can just grab the software at blender.org and download and install it. Um, and once you have it installed, simply start it up and you'll land up at the Blender um, environment. And you just click to start. Now there's lots of tutorials on the web on how to use Blender, so I'll, I'll put a, a link um, in the notes for if you want to learn more about Blender. Uh, but hopefully I'll mention enough keystrokes and things uh, as we go along so that you um, can follow along if you want. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is select at the top here the Cycles Renderer. That is kind of the latest and greatest rendering engine built into Blender, which gives a much uh, better lighting and photorealistic effects. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we want to delete the default cube and the default light. Uh, and Blender is a little weird in that selection is with a right mouse click. So you select that and then you can press the delete key to delete the light and another one to delete the cube. All right. And this one over here is our camera and it's currently looking at the middle. And uh, you can use the number keys on your keypad uh, to switch between views. So if you want to see zero, uh, lets you look at uh, what the camera is seeing. Uh, we can go from the front for number one or three for the right um, or seven for the top. Um, and you can use the um, center button, uh, center, middle mouse. If you hold that down and move the wheel around, you can kind of scroll your view around and use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. All right. So what we're going to do is we first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new um, object or mesh, uh, which is uh, what you see as a physical thing on the screen when you render. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select from the add menu. We're going to go mesh. We're going to select something called an icosphere, which looks a bit like a ball, except it's made out of uh, little triangles. And then in the number of subdivisions here, we're going to increase that up to Five. Oh, let's make that four rather. And if we're zooming with the mouse wheel, you can kind of see it's made out of little triangles there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use, click this smooth shading button over there, which basically just smooths out the shading so it looks more like a, uh, a smooth surface rather than a faceted uh, surface. All right, so now that we've got our uh, sphere on the ground, what we want to do is we want to make it kind of um, sharp and pointy like this. Uh, so we want to take that sphere and manipulate it to make it um, all pointy. Uh, and there's a really easy way to do that. Uh, it's called a displacement modifier. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on um, over here to uh, select a new type of texture. And we're going to click on new. And that will create us a, a texture. And in the type of the texture, what we want to do is select clouds. And that will generate uh, a uh, image within Blender that's made out of shades of white and black and gray. It looks a bit like clouds. All right. Uh, we then want to click back to the Material tab. And currently, we have the Icosphere selected, the one, this ball that we've just created here. And what we want to do is we want to click on here to say that um, we want a new material. All right. And that set up, sets it up as white. Uh, we can click on this color here and let's make it a bit of a green for the moment. All right. Um, next up, we will click on. Oh, and so if we press the F12 button, it will render a green sphere for us. And you can press escape to go back to your view. All right. Now that we've got um, the cloud texture over here. What we want to do is we want to click on this little um, wrench here, which is the modifiers. And what we're going to do is we're going to add under the deform section a displace modifier. And 
where uh, this little texture area here, we want to hit the drop down and select this texture here, which is our cloud texture here. And what you'll see is it's made it all a little pointy. Um, so what, if we can look back at our texture here, we've got various shades of white and gray and black. What the displace modifier does is it takes our, um, our mesh, which is made out of little triangles. And we can see that if we come down to this thing here and click and say we want to see the wireframe, you can see that it's made out of lots and lots of little triangles. And what the displace modifier does is it moves each of the points of the triangles um, in and out based on the color of the texture. So um, black is all the way in, white is all the way out, and gray is um, uh, degrees within in and out or, or shifting in and out. And to make this look a little bit pointier, what we can do is we're going to crank up the strength here to five. All right, now we land up with a quite a pointy thing. So if we click back there and we go back to um, material, um, we will see we've got a pointy um, crystal looking type thing, but it's much sharper and pointier than we want. So if we press F12 again, we will see that we've got this kind of sharp pointy thing. Right, so we don't want it to be as pointy as that. We want it to be a lot um, smoother looking, kind of like goopy. Um, so to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to add yet another modifier. And this modifier is called a subdivision surface modifier. And what we're going to do there, uh, what it does is basically every single one of those current triangles there, it adds um, additional triangles in. So if we go back to our wireframe view, you'll see that it's much denser. And if I turn it off there, it looks like that. And you see there's far less triangles. Well, hopefully you can see there's far less triangles. And if I click it, there's far more. And we're even going to add a bit more by clicking this up to three. And the same for the render. So the view option is how many triangles you see within your viewport, like when you're manipulating it. And if you have a slower computer, you might want to set that to a lower version uh, number. And this here is the number of subdivisions when we actually do the render, which is when it does the calculation. So if we press F12 again, um, select, oops, select over there, press F12, uh, we'll see we now have a, um, it's a, a lot smoother looking. Okay. Now it's kind of ugly because it's just kind of that yucky shade of um, green and we don't have much in the way of lighting going on. Um, so you'll see it's very dark and shaded um, and very flat looking. All right, so uh, the first thing we're going to do is um, add some lights. So firstly, we're going to set up the world and give the world some natural lighting. So if you click on this little world icon over here, uh, we're going to click on the use nodes button um, and we're going to leave it as background, uh, but we're going to take this here and we are going to click on that and crank it all the way up so that it is white, one, 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 all the way there. Um, and now if we press F12 to render again, uh, you see that it is very, very, very white, probably too much light. Um, so we we'll press escape. Now it kind of gets boring having a look, um, having to render all the time. So what we're going to do is from over here, instead of being on material, if we click it onto rendered, um, Blender will just keep rendering for us. And also once again, using those controls like the um, holding down the middle mouse button, we can move around and it will update the render for us. Um, so looking at this, the strength is way too strong. So if we make it a zero point, whoops, not a zero, but a 0 0.1 perhaps, um, that will just give it an, a bit of light um, in the scene. All right. Um, so the next thing we want to do is actually add a bit of a floor um, so that we can have something to have some shadows um, cast on, because at the moment it's just on a gray background. Uh, so what we want to do is, once again, we're going to go to the Add menu. And we're going to go Mesh, and we're going to say Add Plane. And we get a plane over there. And uh, what we're going to do with the plane is click on the little box, which is the object itself, or its properties. And we're going to say that we're just going to scale it out. So we're going to say it's 50 times bigger on the x-axis and 50 times bigger on the y-axis. All right, so we've got this 
gray plane sitting there. And if we press zero on the number pad, um, oops, focus on the side and press zero on the number pad, uh, we can see where it is, uh, or at least as the camera scene. Now, what you can see is that it's currently chopping our object in half. Um, so if we click back to material mode and select the plane there, we'll have this little widget over here. If we carefully grab uh, the blue arrow, we can drag it down and pass there. It's a little hard to see from this side. So if we press three on the number pad um, and it's um, at a perspective, so we don't want a perspective. Let's just press five on your number pad to take it away from perspective. It puts it into orthographic view, so everything's um, there's no perspective on the view, and we can see we've got this little bit sticking out the bottom here. So we just keep grabbing that, and we'll slide that little bit there so that this object is floating above uh, the plane. And if we press zero again, just to see what the camera's going to see, it's going to look a bit like that. And if we go to rendered mode, uh, we now have that. Now it's still very dark, um, so let's add um, some more lights. And because we want um, this to be quite shiny and look like there's a big giant uh, like fluorescent ceiling panel uh, above the object or near of looking down on the object, uh, what we're going to do for our lighting is that we are uh, not going to use um, a light, but we are instead going to use a another plane and set it to emit light. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press uh, th three on the keyboard and zoom out a bit. And I'm going to just um, click over there to put the cursor back roughly in the middle there. Uh, and then I'm going to go add mesh and I'm going to add new plane. Uh, so there's my new plane. Um, I'm going to size it up a little, so make it like rectangular. So I'm going to make it um, 10 by 5. Um, I'm going to press the R key to rotate, and I'm going to rotate it about there somewhere. And then the G key for grab, which then lets me move it around, and I can left click to place it down. If I press zero, I've managed to move it right in front of the camera. So let's just um, zoom out a bit and I'm going to grab that and pull it behind the camera and press zero. Okay, that's looking good. So the next thing we need to do is give this a material. So with the plane selected, I'm going to click on materials. I'm going to click new. And instead of being a diffuse, which is just basically a, a, a color, I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say that it is an emission shader or surface. So this means it emits light and it's going to emit white. And I'm going to give it a strength of five, which is quite a lot of light. And once again, if we click on our rendered view, we can see now that we have light coming down onto the object there. We press zero from a camera view. Uh, we can see what we got there. And it's pretty bright, but we We'll probably tweak that a little shortly. All right, now, in fact, let's just dump that down to maybe a three to start with, and we'll have a look what that looks like. Yeah, maybe that. All right, now, our original um, object here has also got a bit of shininess, a bit of glossiness. It looks a bit like a plastic. Um, so let's see about adding that in. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our icosphere, which is this object over there. And we currently see what we've just got a, as a green object with a diffuse shader. So what we're going to do is we want to mix up. Uh, we want to give it a bit of diffuse and a bit of glossiness as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to select that object over there. I mean that option over there. And we are going to pick on mix shader, which allows us to mix uh, the attributes of two shaders. And the first shader we're going to pick on is the um, diffuse shader. It defaults to uh, white, so we're going to click on there, and we're going to make it um, our green color again. And I think I will darken it a little, just make it a bit of a darker green, something like that. And then for our other shader over there, and this slot over there, we click on that, and we set that to be a glossy shader. 
and you see it's now become very, very shiny. All right, so the first thing we wanna do with the shader is we wanna dial down the roughness all the way to zero. And that makes it very much um, like smooth, like a piece of glass. So it basically is a mirror. That's a lot of reflection, uh, but we don't want it to reflect too much. So what we're gonna do is this factor here is the amount of glossiness versus diffuse or the mixture thereof. And we only really want a teeny amount of glossy just to make it look a bit like plastic. So we can click on that there and make that 0 0.025. There we are. And that gives us just a hint of glossiness. Okay. Now, as you see, if you look carefully, you see the way the renderer uh, works. It has multiple um, samples and iterations of samples, and the more samples it runs, does, the longer it takes and the better the quality of the picture. Um, I think this green though, is a little too bright still, so let's um, dim it down a little bit more. Yeah. All right, so I think that will do. So what we really want to do now is we want to generate a, a nice um, high quality image that we can uh, use as our desktop wallpaper. Um, so to do that, we, what we're going to do is we firstly going to go to the um, render tab, the setting of here. Okay, so on the render tab, uh, what we first want to do is scroll down to the sampling and uh, change it to final, which improves the quality of the final render. Um, and then we want to move over to where it says resolution. It's currently set for 1920 by 1080, uh, which is HD quality, um, but it is uh, set at 50%, which is half size, which is very useful for um, doing test renders, uh, but we want it to be at 100% because we want to render it uh, full size. All right, um, we then press F12 to start the render, and you'll see it'll take a much slower than it has been going before. So up at the top here is your uh, render progress, and you see that we are currently rendering uh, tile number five out of 510, and that the uh, estimated time to run is gonna be 51 minutes. Um, it's gonna run a, actually a lot, uh, faster than that, uh, but what I'll do now is I'll pause the video and come back once the rendering is complete. Okay, so our render is finished. Um, took just a little over um, 12 and a half minutes, and uh, here is our, our final image. Uh, so what we can do now is we want to save this um, out so we can use it as our wallpaper. So under the image menu over here, you click on that and you can say uh, save as image and we will put it on our desktop and we're going to call it something like green thing dot png and hit save as image and uh, we should probably save our file as well in case we don't make changes at some point in time. So if I'll save um, on my desktop and we'll call it green thing dot blend Oops. blend and save that as well cool so if we minimize that uh, we'll now have our green thing image over there and of course we can right click that and set as our desktop background and voila we have our abstract wallpaper so uh, hopefully that has been uh, interesting and um, if you make any renders I'd like to see them put a link in the comments and uh, until next time cheers